Hello, this is a short yoga video to help improve mid-back mobility so that you can relieve tension around the neck, the shoulders, and that mid-back. And it also helps to improve some breathing by mobilizing our tissues around the diaphragm so you can get this nice, big, expansive breath. So two things that you'll need for this practice are a yoga strap. And if you don't have a strap, you can simply tie two hand towels together, or you could use a belt. And the other option, if you do not have a yoga block, is stacking two books, one on top of the other, equaling about six inches tall. So we can go ahead and get started by coming down onto our backs. And let's take a few moments to take three nice deep breaths, breathing in through the nose. And as you exhale, try to make your exhale slightly longer than your inhale. Excellent. Letting the breath return back to a nice even state. Try to find some softness in your jaw, your shoulders, and then the chest, the mid back, and the low back. Good. Taking the arms out nice and wide into a T position. Go ahead and wrap the arms around the shoulder blades here like you're giving yourself a big hug. Wrapping those fingers around the shoulder blades pressing the back of the head into the ground, and then drawing the navel in toward the spine to flatten out the low back. Try to maintain this nice long activation here throughout the spine as you take three to five rounds of breath. The inhales are pressing your shoulder blades into the palms of the hands, and then exhale. Good. At your own pace here, keep trying to press that back of the head into the ground and flattening out the low back as you finish up these last few breaths. Good, on your last exhale, open up the arms, stretching them out nice and wide. And then on the exhale, cross the opposite arm over this time. Once again, wrapping the fingers around the shoulder blades, pressing the back of the head into the ground, flattening out the low back. And begin to take some nice deep breaths, breathing into those hands. It takes a little extra work here to maintain that core contraction, to maintain that deep neck flexor strengthening. This is a great exercise to align the spine, to wake up those postural muscles, and to give your shoulders a nice stretch. Good. On your last exhale, we'll go ahead and open up those arms. Take a moment here if you find some relaxation here as you unwind from that. Good. So your next one, you'll come up to grab your yoga block and will help you align your block or books on your mat. So you want the block to land just about where you're feeling any tension or mid-back discomfort on the edge of your block, the closest edge of your block, okay? And you might need to make some little adjustments here to find that spot. But once you do, we're going to place the hands behind the head and then as you extend back and over that block, try to drop your elbows down toward the ground and lift the chest up toward the sky. Exhale to come back up, still keeping the shoulder blades on the block. And then as you exhale, lift the chest, press the elbows down toward the ground. Good. And feel free to take as many of these as feels necessary. You might feel a little pop or a crack, which might bring some relief. Uh, but that's not necessary to happen. If you feel like, okay, that spot started to mobilize a little bit more, then you can move the block or books up or down on your spine and repeat. Good. And when you feel satisfied with that, you can go ahead and come up onto your seat here. 
sometimes people like to elevate the pelvis by sitting up on your blocks or books. So whatever feels good for you. So wherever you land, we're going to be doing a little bit of diaphragm self massage. So we want to access the diaphragm, which falls underneath the lower ribs, but not the floating ribs. So not out by the sides here, but you're finding this sternal angle here by pressing on the breastbone until you can't go anymore. And you kind of feel like the ribs start to come out at an angle here to either side. So that's our center point. And then you're going to let that upper back round. So you're kind of hunching over. I don't say this very often, so enjoy. And you're going to walk the fingers down that rib. And as you step off of that, that angle in the middle of the ribs, we're going to just hook the fingers underneath that rib. Okay. So you're not necessarily pulling away, but your pressure is going under the rib and almost up. Okay. You might feel a little bit of sensitivity here, like a, a trigger point, um, kind of similar to what you feel with a deep tissue massage. And that's actually kind of what we're going for here. So when you find a spot and you can move along that rib, when you find a spot, go ahead and push and hold. And you're breathing for about 15 to 30 seconds until you feel that tension start to subside a little bit. Good. And then when that happens, you can move to another spot. That might be feeling a little bit of tension there too, pressing and holding a consistent pressure and working with the breath to try to let that space kind of resolve its tension. Good. So when you feel satisfied with one side, we'll find that, ster that sternal angle here and try to work our way down the opposite rib. And oh yeah, you might notice that one side feels a little different from the other um, and that's perfectly normal. But when you find those little sensitive areas, go ahead and push and hold a constant pressure and find your breath here. Good, and as that starts to subside, maybe you scoot down to another section that feels a little tense, spend some time there. Once again, working with your breath. Good. And again, work there until you feel satisfied with that mobility. So hopefully we have a little more mobility in our diaphragm for this next exercise. So taking your yoga strap belt or wrap up towels, you're going to place that item just below the bra line, okay? And then wrapping that strap across the body, crisscross it in the front, just below the breast line, and then grabbing onto the ends of the strap with palms, palms turned up. So you're gently pulling and cinching up that strap as you breathe into the strap. Good, and as you exhale, let everything relax. Try to keep the shoulders nice and soft here. So as you go through this, the objective is to get the rib cage to press into the strap 360 degrees around. So a lot of us breathe with the front part of our ribs and we don't really target the back or side of our ribs. And that's where the diaphragm actually comes together. There's a lot of fascia that can get kind of gummed up in those areas. So these deep breathing exercises over time will help you have a more expansive breath. It will open up the mobility of your mid back. Good. So we are doing about 10 of these diaphragm breaths. Good. And then when you have finished up your 10 breaths, you can move that strap off to the side. So the strap is nice because it kind of gives you a little external tactile cue for you to press against. So like I said, the goal is to get the side of the ribs and then the front and the back of the ribs expanding 360 degrees 
Um, and then as you start to get more comfortable with that, you can maybe try it without a strap and see how you do. Good. So our next exercise is going to be our cervical retraction. So sitting up nice and tall, this could be done in a chair, um, but it's, it's just as good here. So we're gently pressing the back of the head toward the back wall and then relaxing. Good. So as you pull back, it's almost like you're stacking your ears over your shoulders and keeping the shoulders over the pelvis. And as you pull back, you're holding for about three seconds and then relax. Good. And just a side view. So this one cracks me up. A patient once told me that this is called the don't kiss me face and it kind of stuck. So pretend like you're pulling back. Don't kiss me. Don't kiss me. Don't kiss me. And then relax. Good. So as you get through some of these, you might feel a little bit of strengthening happening in your deep neck flexors. So these muscles just below the base of the skull and then also deep inside the throat, okay? Good. So when you get through about 10 of these, good. then we can swivel over onto our hands and knees. And you're going to take your yoga blocks or if you're using books, we'll separate them and placing one hand on one book or block and one hand on the other book or block. Okay, so coming into a couple of rounds of cat-cow here with the fingers curled over your blocks, we're going to drop that belly down, inhale as you look up, and then exhale to push through the spine rounding as you come into your cat pose. So as you're coming into your cat pose, you can kind of play around with the apex of this curve. So the uppermost part of the curve. So you can either push through those hands and really get an upper back rounding, or you can kind of work with drawing that navel up toward the spine to get more of the rounding in this mid back diaphragm area. Okay. So find what feels good. This might take a little bit of practice here, but as you find it, you'll be able to explore more benefits of this pose. Good. So coming through and doing about 10 rounds of cat-cow with this thoracic spine bias. Then we're going to get, so we just did, this is flexion and extension of the spine. Then we'll sit our weight back onto our heels. You can move your blocks off to the top of your mat and walk the hands a little closer to you so the chest is upright. Placing the right hand behind the head will come into some spinal rotation now. And as you exhale, twist to tap that elbow down toward the ground. And then as you inhale, lift and look up underneath that elbow. So we'll take a few rounds on the right and then a few rounds on the left. So by sitting back on the heels, you're reducing the movement that comes from your low back. So we're able to tap in a little more into that upper back. Good. And then release that hand to the ground, reaching the left hand up, exhale, twist to tap, and then inhale to lift and look up. Good. And as you finish those off, we'll come up onto our hands and knees for our tabletop once again. All right, so we just did flexion extension, spinal rotation. Now we're going to do spinal side bending. So a nice neutral tabletop here as you bump the hips off to the left, take your gaze over that left shoulder to peek at your hip. Good, and then come back through center, bumping the hips off to the right, taking the gaze over that right shoulder. Good, and as we flow through this right to left side bending, see if you can focus on that area in the spine that has the most restriction. And see if you can't find some rotation around that point. Excellent job, last one here. Good, and then come back to center and we are going to come into a little version of thread the needle. So you wanna get your blocks or books right up close underneath the head here. 
All right, so shifting your weight onto your left hand, we're going to inhale, take the hand across the chest as you reach up toward the sky. And then exhale to thread that arm through, taking the ear down onto a block, okay? Try to level off your hips and gently press the back of the hand into the floor. See if you can get the hips stacked right over the knees here. And hopefully you're feeling most of this rotation happening in that mid-back area. And feel free to make any little adjustments you need to find that. But as you settle in, we'll begin to take three to five breaths. Good, pressing into that palm, you'll unwind from that twist, reaching the arm up, and then exhale to take that back down to the ground. Good, other side, shifting your weight onto the right hand, inhale to float that left arm up, and then exhale to thread that arm through the space, taking the ear down to the ground or onto your block. Level off the hips and try to keep the hips stacked right over the knees. And as you settle into this pose, maybe you find a gentle press of the back of the hand into the ground and take three to five breaths. Good, pressing into your palm as you unwind from the twist, reach it up and then exhale to take it back down to the ground, good. So to conclude this series, we'll come down onto our Bellies here, stacking one hand over top of the other. Coming down into crocodile pose, you'll rest the forehead on the back of the hands. And as you start to settle in, let the heels fall out and the tops of the feet rest on the ground. Feel a lengthening happening through the back of the neck. And feel free to close your eyes here, letting go of any tension in the jaw the shoulders and make any little adjustments that you might need to feel more comfortable here. And we're trying to send the breath down into that mid back. Okay, keeping the neck and jaw soft as you inhale. So this is a really great pose to do to access those muscles in the back of the body to help us breathe. So the floor is kind of restricting that frontward rising of the rib cage. So your air has nowhere to go but to the back body. Good. And we'll be here in silence for five to six more breaths. Good, and then deep in this last breath here to bring some awareness back into the physical body. Gently sliding one hand out and placing it under the shoulder and then the other hand out, placing it under the other shoulder. Press into those palms to send the hips up and back. Dive the chest down just to stretch out those arms that mid back in a child's pose. And we'll take a couple of breaths here. Good. And then press it back up to your tabletop and we'll sweep the legs around to come into a comfortable seat just for a moment here. Placing the palms on the knees and loop those shoulders down and back as you sit up nice and tall, nice and energetic. A good place to practice your little don't kiss me face here, cervical retraction. Good. And hopefully you feel that you have the ability to breathe a little deeper and use most of your diaphragm to do that work. And gather the hands in front of the heart, tuck the chin, and may you have peace in your thoughts, in your words, and in your heart. Remind to you, namaste.